Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to week three, day three of our unit eight lesson in CCC Making Meaning. Uh, I'm Ms. Dunbar, and I'm here in my reading corner that's in the office of my house that I share with my family in West Seattle. We are about a mile away from the school I typically teach at, Arbor Heights. I'm missing all of my fifth graders, and I know that you are missing your teachers as well, but I'm glad that we're here together to do some reading today. Uh, each day, I'm sharing a fun fact about myself, and today the fact is that, um, as many of my students continue, tell you, I love to swim. And so I have my goggles ready because I'm hoping by the summer, the pools will be open again and I'll be able to go to my favorite summer destination, which is Coleman Pool in Lincoln Park. It's a beautiful place to swim and who knows, maybe I'll see you there, come on down. All right, before we begin the lesson, let's make sure we have all of our materials together. You will need a pencil or a pen to write with. You'll need the pages that we started working with yesterday from the extension packet that, the, that accompanies the link to this video. <clears throat> Remember, it's the pages that start with story and we'll be doing sections four, five, and six today. You'll also need your IDR book for when we finish at the end of the lesson. All right, I'm gonna give you a moment to gather those things together. Okay, now that you have your materials together, I also want you to think about who you're going to be sharing with today. Who's your turn and talk partner? That can be another person in your house that's watching the lesson with you. It can be a stuffed animal. You can imagine talking to your friend on the phone, or you can be reflecting in your own mind. The important part is that you are doing your own self reflection on the text that we are reading and having that discussion about the important parts and supporting details. And that you're supporting your opinions with reasons for, for making the choices that you are making them. One way to start um, a statement where you're supporting your opinion is to say, the reason I think this is. So try using that when you're sharing with your turn and talk partner today. The, the focus of our lesson today will be around summarizing. Um, the first two weeks with Mr. Barr and Ms. Cook, you were looking at um, summarizing informational text. And this week, remember, we've been working on summarizing fictional text. And summarizing is an important reading strategy because it helps you as the reader understand a text. And it helps to show that you can also communicate about it, whether through writing or chatting about it. So that's uh, the goal of our lesson, and let's get started. Here's our section four. Remember, you follow along at home and read with me and be thinking about the important ideas and supporting details. She was terribly fat. She got so hot in summer that her hair hung down in wet strings and her clothes looked limp. In winter, she wore the same sweater every day, a man's gray one, too big with the sleeves pushed up. They kept slipping down and she'd shove them back a million times a day, yet she never rolled up the cuffs to make them shorter. She never took days off. She was always there. We didn't like her or hate her. We sort of knew that selling stuff to kids for a trickle of small change wasn't a job anybody would choose, especially in that pokey little place with flies in summer and the door being opened all winter, letting in blasts of cold air. Even after that day when she fixed my knee, I didn't once wonder about her life. Then I stopped at Buell's one afternoon and she wasn't there. Instead, a man and a woman I'd never laid eyes on were behind the counter, sorting through stacks of stuff. 
They were getting some boxes down off a high shelf right then, so they didn't hear me come in. I was so amazed I just stood there gawking. So as I reflected on this, it occurred to me that probably the most important thing was that Kate is realizing that she didn't ever once wonder about Miss Steele and what her life was like. In fact, she just always knew that she was around. She was just always there. So actually, I'm going to add that as a supporting detail. Because she was always there, she didn't really wonder about her not being there. And she just planned, kind of took her for granted. Another important detail that I notice are important part of the, the um, a passage was that she didn't really realize that about think about her life until she wasn't there one day and that was a big change for Kate she in fact she was so amazed by Miss Buell not being there that she just stood there gawking at the door when she first came in not making any noise so that the man and the woman in there didn't hear her at all. Okay, now let's move on to section five. I'm going to read and then we'll, you can pause the video so that you have an opportunity to share with your partner about the important parts and supporting details. And remember to support your ideas with your opinions with your reasons why you have that opinion. How Ma stood this cruddy hole, I'll never know, the woman said, backing away from a cloud of dust. Didn't she ever clean? Give the subject a rest, Glow, he answered. She's dead. She won't bother you any longer. I tried, Harry. You know I tried. Over and over, I told her she could move in with us. God knows I could have used a bit of cash and her help looking after those kids. I think I must have made a sound then. Anyway, she whirled around and saw me. This place is closed, she snapped. Harry, I thought I told you to lock the door. What did you want? I didn't want anything from her, but I still could not believe Mrs. Buell wasn't there. I stared around. I said, we're shut. If you don't want anything, beat it, she told me. All right, pause the video and take some time to turn and talk to your partner about the important part of this section. So when you are having a conversation with your turn and talk partner, you might have noticed that really a big idea from this section is that um, Kate realizes that Mrs. Buell is dead. Actually, I'm going to put that in black because that was all of my important ideas are in black. Um, and here she's always been around, but all of a sudden she's dead. And she really can't believe that she was not there. Someone who had always been there was suddenly not there. She's really in, in amazement. Um, you might have noticed too one of the important, important details is that because she's dead, she's not there. The store is now closed. Sorry, I didn't do that very well. Let's fix that. This place is closed. This is apparently a big change for Kate in her life, and she's really trying to absorb that. Before we move on, please pause this video and take some time to think about the important parts um, in sections four and five and what you want to make a note about in the margins.
Remember, making those notes will help you when we go to write the summary tomorrow. Some of the notes that I wrote were in section four, I wrote that Mrs. Buell was always in the store until she wasn't there. Kate can't believe it. Remember, this is she's pretty stunned about the situation. Then in section five, I just made a little note to myself that Kate finds out that Mrs. Buell has died. That seems to be a turning point for Kate and part of why she's wanting to share the story with us. Next, we're going to do section six, but you're going to do that more independently with your turn and talk partner. Uh, I'd like you to please read passage six on your own and then write some notes in the margin about the important information that you're getting from that section of the text. Finally, underline sentences that seem most important to you in the text. Remember, you're not going to underline everything, but just the ones that you think are most important to remember from the text. So pause this video to do that now. All right, now you've had a chance to go through section six underlining important parts and making notes to yourself. As I went through, I really started to ask myself, what happens in this section? How does Kate feel about Mrs. Buell's death? What sentences tell me about that? And the ones that really stood out to me were towards the bottom here, where she talks about the first time she's reflecting that nothing in her life is safe, not even the everyday taken for granted background of her being. I think she realized that Mrs. Buell was someone she thought would always be there because she was always part of her routine with her friends, going into Buell's store and buying things from her. She was always around. And then one day she wasn't. So that was sad to her. I think she also reflected a little bit more about Mrs. Buell. And so this is um, a reason I would say that she's really thinking differently of her now because she's wondering, did anyone love her? And in her own memory, she's realizing the thing that she remembers most is that Mrs. Buell putting on that band-aid on her knee that day that she did that. So it's all feeding into her realizing that Mrs. Buell was a big part of her life. And now she's gone. Okay, now let's reflect on some of the notes we put in the margins as well. Remember, those notes are important because you're paraphrasing what the important parts about the text in your own words. So you're preparing yourself to write the summary. Um, the notes I made were uh, is that Kate realizes at the end that you, you can't take anything for granted around you and that possibly she had taken Mrs. Buell for granted. She also realizes that uh, Mrs. Buell had been kind to Kate and she remembered that the band-aid um, being put on her knee was something, a kindness that Mrs. Buell had shown her. So save those notes, keep them safe, because you will be using them tomorrow as we move into writing a summary together. Now we're going to move into IDR time. Remember, you need a just right book, and you may also print out a copy of a reading journal from the extension packet, or you can make your own on notebook paper. What's important today is that after you write your name and the date, is you also write the title of the book and your author uh, from the book, and you write a short summary about a section of the book, maybe a chapter that you've read, and uh, to help the other uh, folks in your house understand what you've read, and also to possibly share with your own teacher. You can upload this on your Schoology site and let your teacher know what book you're reading at home for your Just Write book.
I've been reading The Birch Bark House by Louise Erdrich. And um, we found out in the last couple of days that the main character, Amokaius, was found as an infant um, living. She was found all alone on an island um, where everyone else in her little village had died from smallpox. And so voyagers brought her back to another village that's on a big lake. And um, we found out that she lives with, she's now, she's seven years old and she lives with a family of um, an older sister, a brother and little baby and her parents and a grandmother. Um, and yesterday I told you about how her mom wanted her to help her um, tan some animal skins, but first she was sent off on an errand to get scissors. So the section I read about today, I did write a summary of, and I'd like to read that to you now. The Birch Bark House by Louise Erdrich is the story of a little girl, Omakaius, growing up in a small Native American village near a lakeshore. The part I read today describes how Omakaius goes off to fetch her mother's scissors from Old Tallow. Old Tallow is a tough woman, but she is fond of Omakaius. When she retrieves the scissors, Omakaius heads towards home. Along the way, she makes friends with two bear cubs. She is startled by the mother sow, but is able to calm her. The mother gently guides the cubs away, and Omakaius continues towards home. So I'm going to be reading today to find out what other adventures Omakaius runs into with the, in the Birch Bark House. And I'm hoping that you find a good book to read for the next 30 minutes and write a short summary of a chapter that you read in your book. And we'll see you tomorrow.